Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Random Vlogging! So, um, today, uh, we need to talk about something. Um, for those of you that are not in the U.S., I, this is actually one of the times that, despite people, um, not living in the U.S., I sincerely doubt anybody has no idea what happened last night. But in the rare case that somehow you you don't know what's been going on for the past year and a half uh, in the United States, um, we have this thing where every four years we elect a president uh, to take the uh, executive power of our government uh, and hopefully use that to continue moving our government forward uh, in a positive way. Yesterday was the big election that um, uh, we got to elect our next president. Our next president uh, will go into office January 20th of 2017, and bare minimum, um, unless he gets uh, somehow ousted out of office, either through, you know, uh, unfortunately dying or being impeached out of office or anything like that, um, uh, he will remain president a bare minimum until January 20th, uh, 2021, I want to say is the date he'll be in, he'll be in office for four years. Um, the person that won our presidential election was, uh, Donald Trump. Um, and everybody is losing their minds. It was remarkable watching people freak out last night uh, uh, about this. Um, and um, that's not why I'm making this video. I am not here to talk about politics. I am not here uh, to talk about anything else. The reason I'm making this video is, is not so much that Donald Trump won the presidency or Hillary Clinton lost the presidency or, you know, both the House of Representatives and the Senate are now Republican controlled. None of that. The reason I'm making this video is I am watching a lot of my friends, of people that I respect, doing insanely unhealthy things right now because of this. Well, what do you mean, Jody? How can they be doing unhealthy things about the president? Okay. So I just had a lovely conversation uh, with someone. Um, uh, because I made a couple posts last night, uh, after watching people freak out, I had a, a conversation with someone on Twitter that will remain nameless, um, where, uh, they mentioned that, uh, their kid isn't, uh, going to have health insurance in January because Trump won the presidency, which is impossible. Uh, Trump doesn't actually become president until January 20th. Um, the thing that they're referencing is, um, uh, getting rid of the Affordable uh, Health Care Act, um, which will take years to do if it even happens. And so I pointed that out. I said, no, this is this is what's called sensationalizing. Um, it's uh, what's called a maladaptive coping method or a non coping method. Um, what that means is there are a lot of people that have um, uh, mental disorders and things like that, that will develop, uh, these things called maladaptive coping methods, which are ways to lessen the symptoms while worsening the disorder. Um, sensationalizing is one of them, uh, by sensationalizing, they sit there and they go, Oh yeah, well, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Oh my God. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, because they have just written history, uh, and they've just decided how the future is going to react. Um, it helps them feel a little bit more in control of themselves. However, because what they are doing is creating a darkest timeline future, it's actually making the disorder worse. If you have anxiety or if you have depression, this is a very common uh, maladaptive, maladaptive coping method. And it's really, really bad. I know this because I used to do it all the time. Um, and it was one of the things, it was one of the first things that I had to learn, um, uh, especially since I'm unmedicated and I, and I, I can't take medication for anything, I, I can't allow myself to sensationalize things because it will get me to a point where I will start 
doing very bad things to myself. Other maladaptive coping methods can uh, include things like self-medicating, which can turn into substance abuse and a, and, a, and a bunch of other things. So maladaptive coping methods are bad. 100% of the time, they are bad. Um, I had another conversation with someone where they mentioned uh, that, again, is going to remain nameless, uh, where they mentioned, well, you know what, this is how I cope with things, and it's, it's not fair for you to tell me that my coping method is wrong. And yes, it is. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, if my coping method was cutting myself or if my coping method was going outside and beating small children, everybody in the world would pile on me and say, well, no, that's really unhealthy. Um, it's dangerous for you. It's dangerous for other people. You can't do that. Um, sensational, uh, sensationalization is the exact same thing. You, it's really, really bad, not only for you, um, but it also hurts other people because you generally don't sensationalize things on your own, especially with how social media works now. Sensationalization uh, can incite fear among the population, uh, can actually cause more people to delve deeper into their mental disorders like anxiety and, and depression and bipolar and, and, and all these other things. They can be affected by somebody sensationalizing. And that's ignoring the damage you're doing to your own psyche by sensationalizing these things. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, just because the candidate you didn't want to win got the presidency does not mean the world is going to end. It's, it's not. Um, it's not going to affect any other country's bare minimum until uh, January 20th. That is the first time Donald Trump can do anything. And despite the fact that we had all these stock market, blah, 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 let's put this into perspective. When Niantic launched Pokemon Go, Nintendo's stock went crazy, despite the fact that Nintendo doesn't own Pokemon Go. It doesn't own anything about it. It made no money off of it besides the licensing fee that Niantic paid to them to use Pokemon. And when that fact came out, their stock plummeted. The stock market in general, um, when Obama first, uh, our, when Obama got reelected, we had weird stock market stuff. Uh, speculative stock market and all that stuff is always going to be fluctuating. And when big stuff like this happens, it's going to be big fluctuations. It doesn't mean the world's going to end. It doesn't. It doesn't. It will self-regulate. It will get back to a place um, where, uh, you know, people are not losing tons of money. This idea that just because, you know, he got elected into office, somehow your 401k is going to disappear. That's not how it works, folks. Um, again, this is sensa um, uh, sensationalizing. This is people looking at something and jumping 42 steps ahead to the worst possible outcome and going, it's inevitable. Um, it's based on a logical fallacy, which is um, uh, the logical fallacy itself is called the slippery slope fallacy, which is, well, if this happens, then this and this and this and this and this and this and this is. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's a logical fallacy based on the idea that you can't actually predict the future. And generally, the steps that you're talking about are not the only steps that can happen. And you are making the assumption that the worst thing is going to happen simply because it's bad. Um, it's not healthy. It's not good. We need to stop this. So one of the conversations that I had about this, I mentioned that you really, if you really want to do something about this, if this is really terrifying you that this is actually going to happen, because I, I firmly believe that millions of Americans are not going to lose their health care coverage. It's just not going to happen. That's not how our country works. Um, but whatever, let's, let's, let's say I'm wrong. Let's say this is the worst thing that has ever happened to our country, and you know, within four years, this is going to be Mad Max. Already got a buddy of mine who's forging me a sword, because you know, once the government collapses and everything like that, guns are great, but people have to make bullets. And once you know, we're in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, making bullets is hard. Sword, however, you just keep it sharp, you keep it repaired, and everything, and you just keep using it. Um, so anyway, let's say let's say I am wrong. Let's say that this is the worst thing that has ever happened to the world, um, and uh, we are entirely screwed. Sensationalizing is not going to help. If you want to do something about it, this was this was my suggestion. You want to do something about it? Let's talk about just healthcare. All right, there's so many other things that people are terrified about. Let's talk about just healthcare. 
If you're terrified that people are, are going to lose their health insurance, they're not going to be able to pay for things. I went and I found a, uh, a website. It's called needhelppayingbills.com. And uh, they actually have an entire page of different uh, nonprofits that help people with medical bills. The page is titled Financial Help with Medical Bills. Um, these are all services that a lot of people have no idea exist because they've never been told about them. Uh, and these are all services that are paid for through donations, through volunteer work. That's how nonprofits work. If you are truly terrified that this country is going to just destroy our healthcare system and tons of people are going to be out without healthcare, find any one of, let's see, there's three, six, 10, 11, 12, uh, 19, 22, there are 22, I should have counted it before, there are 22 different uh, nonprofits just on this page. There are tons more. Find one that speaks to you. Um, I would probably say uh, Patient Advocate Foundation uh, is um, uh, uh, a great one. Where's the one that I was looking at that was really, really awesome? Um, the Healthy Well Foundation is, is a fantastic one. The Chronic Disease Fund. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Was it? Yeah, the Patient Access uh, Network is another one. Find one of these that speaks to you. That goes, you know what? That's what I want to help with. That's uh, that's what I think will help this situation as we transition from, um, you know, what we had to what we are going to have because. That's how this is going to work. Find one of them, contact them, say, hey, I want to help you guys. I want, I want to do something. Um, do you guys have fundraising events that you do that I could volunteer at? Um, do you guys have areas around here that I can volunteer my time to do that? Would you guys mind if I ran a fundraising event for your charity? I will 100% guarantee you none of them will say, oh, no, 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 please don't, don't. We, we don't want money. No, 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 no. We don't want volunteer hours. What are you talking about? We prefer to be massively understaffed uh, and have the ability to help a fraction of the people that we actually want to help. <laughs> please, please go home and uh, just keep worrying about how horribly screwed the world is. That will help a lot more. Um yeah, contact these people, talk to them about um, talk to them about what you can do to help, and then do it. If you've never, uh, if they don't have a fundraising event you can volunteer for, uh, start your own. If you've never done a fundraising event before, shoot me a message and I will give you the tips that I use to run the various events that I run throughout the year. Um, it's... The reason that I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this is that is a healthy coping method. Despite the fact that one person cannot make a huge difference, one person can make a difference. And by focusing on doing something, instead of focusing on being terrified of how the world is going to end up, not only are you helping yourself, not only are you helping other people, but you're helping to limit the, uh, the effects of uh, the mental disorder. By going out and doing something, you are removing a lot of the tools that the disorder can use to um, uh, make your life even worse. Um, you are actually helping to heal yourself by going and, and doing things instead of just kind of worrying and fearing, uh, uh, being afraid of them. So, um, yes, that is the entire point of this. I will have a link to uh, the page in the description below. Please check it out. Um, like I said, if you need help, let me know. Um, I am not, uh, I am by no means an expert. I'm just someone who has done a few things successfully. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, um, despite what's happening, uh, in DC right now, despite what's happening in the rest of the world, 
being afraid and talking about how screwed we are will not help anyone, especially you. It's dangerous. It's destructive. Uh, and it will lead to more bad things. There is no good outcome to sensa um, sensationalizing things. There isn't. But if we sit here and we try and change things and we try and make the world better by actively doing something, not only are we helping the world, we're helping ourselves. We're helping to treat the disease, not the symptoms. We're helping ourselves to get better. So please, 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 please don't be afraid. Fear doesn't help anybody. If you are in the boat where you really can't see a way out of this, you're terrified for your life, you're terrified for your well-being, <clears throat> that's okay. I'm not saying you're a bad person for getting to that place. I'm not saying that it's not justified or anything like that. I am saying if you dwell on that, it's not going to help you. And there are a lot of different ways and people that can help. One other thing I'm going to put in uh, the description below um, is a few crisis helplines. Um, there are points where you can't help yourself. It happens. Um, and at that point, you need to reach out and, uh, and ask for help. And these crisis helplines can help you with that. Sometimes it's, it's just as simple as having someone to talk to and go, hey, you know what? It is a really scary time, and it's okay that you're afraid, but it's not as bad as you think, and we can get through this. Sometimes that's the most amazing, wonderful thing that you can ever have happen to you. Um, so yeah, like I said, first link will be all these charities. Do something positive. It will help. I guarantee it. Trust me on this. I've been living... <coughs> I've been living unmedicated for almost a decade now. Um, it helps. <clears throat> it really does. And if you are in a really, really bad place right now, right underneath that is going to be uh, the phone number uh, to a couple crisis helplines. Call them up. Talk to them. You will be surprised how much they can help. It, it really is impressive. All right. That's all for me today. I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.